Now let's take a look at fuel with alcohol in it. You have this pit here uh, on a GM flex fuel vehicle, it says 8% alcohol content because its alcohol composition sensor is at 58 hertz. When you see something like that in a flex fuel vehicle, that's A-OK. -okay. Let's watch a little clip on how to determine what your customer's vehicle's fuel composition is with some simple hands-on tips. Fuel volatility, fuel contamination, and alcohol content have always been moving targets for drivability for both cold start and fuel trim issues from the very beginning, from carburetor days up till now with gas direct injection, sequential, you name it. So some of the tools from yesteryear, like this reed vapor pressure test kit, where you literally take a cup of hot of water and you put this coffee cup in the microwave, you heat it till it boils, and then you get a sample of gasoline from an approved container, put it in this little receptacle right here, and when this thing goes in to the little hot water, you watch for the temperature to come back to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And at 100 Fahrenheit, whatever that pressure is, that's called the reed vapor pressure. In the winter, it's gotta be higher for the fuel to be more volatile, to vaporize and burn easier for cold starts. But if it's too high, like winter gas in the summer, it can cause vapor lock and drivability issues. So this is not as big of a problem as it's been in the past, but what is a big problem now with not only E10, but E85, the flex fuel in vehicles that aren't flex fuel, like right behind me, a Ford, late model Ford, that would have a traditional yellow gas cap, or with the case of the capless uh, uh, vehicles, we would have yellow writing on the filler neck that says E85. This one says E10 to E15. E15 is not really out there too much yet, but E10 is about every gas pump you get. But if somebody gets some E85, maybe half a tank, and they have the other half of the tank that was already in the vehicle that's E10, then you have drivability issues, very severe, and fuel trim numbers will go positive because the alcohol content in the tank is not got enough energy and the computer doesn't know you have alcohol so it doesn't adjust the base pulse width like a flex fuel vehicle would with a virtual sensor which is using fuel trim after a refuel or an actual alcohol test uh, sensor, a sensor that measures the alcohol content going from the tank up to the engine. If you don't have a flex fuel vehicle, there is no way it knows, it just knows this something's really lean, I don't have enough fuel, it sprays more fuel to compensate and sets the lean codes, 171 and 174. So what we got to do is check a good sample of gas from the tank. So I pulled some gas out of this particular non-flex fuel vehicle and I put it into a little test tube. Now what I'll do is I will first pour one ml of water into the bottom of the test tube and then I will fill it up to 10. So nine mls of gasoline from the vehicle and one ml of just plain old tap water. And you shake it up real good and let it set for a few minutes. The separation line, if you have pure gasoline, no alcohol whatsoever, will be at the one ml. It'll be the very bottom right here because gasoline is lighter than water, the water will sink to the bottom, whether it be in the gas tank or in this little test tube. So as we let it settle, we see this one over here on your right is at one, actually it's a little above that because it's E10. E10 is normal pump gas. So that will mix some of that water into the overall sample because water is sustained or suspended in alcohol and the alcohol mixes with the gas. So I've raised from, 1 ml, which is what the water I put in here, up to almost 2, about uh, 1.7. So we have about E7, about 7% alcohol in the gasoline, quite acceptable for this Ford that's not flex fuel. On your left here, I have a sample that, again, I put 1 ml of water and 9 mls of, of fuel from another test vehicle, but it came in on a wrecker. It wouldn't start. It had drivability issues and it had lean codes. So we did a sample, one ml of water. So the separation line should be maybe between one and two. If it was at two, that would raise it up one notch, which would be 10% or E10. But look where the separation line here. Over here was it about 17 or 20, between 17 and 20. Here it's 
almost up to about 55 or 60. So this is about E50 or 60. This is a very high alcohol content with the separation line clear up here, indicating we have an issue. If it doesn't say flex fuel on the filler neck, doesn't have a yellow cap like this that says E85, then if you have a sample like this drawn from your customer's vehicle, you have your answer to why fuel trims are raising positive numbers, compensating for a very energy poor gasoline, and also giving you drivability problems.